Hi, and welcome to this video recording for hashtag Ask About Asthma 2024. Today, we're going to focus on um, uh, children in schools, children with asthma in schools. And I have special guests today, uh, Dr. Meredith Robertson, uh, a specialist paediatric respiratory consultant from the Evelina Hospital, and Ashira Simmons, a clinical nurse specialist from the Evelina Hospital. I am Sukeshi Makecha. I am a paediatric respiratory specialist pharmacist. I work at the Royal Brompton and Evelina Hospitals. Uh, so we're going to go through uh, tips and practicalities of asthma in schools. And we're going to start with Dr. Robertson or Meredith, if you don't mind me calling you Meredith. Um, just going through in your experience um, of looking after children in intensive care and as a tertiary specialist consultant, what do you think are the main issues that you see? Um, well, I think that we have a really valuable working partnership with lots of the schools that our patients attend. Um, I think what's absolutely vital is that information is shared in both directions about what the child's health needs are and how school can support an individual child, but also about what school observe of um, the children in their care and how that might, because that certainly can influence the decisions that I'm making in order to try and keep those children healthy and learning and attending and playing. I think the most common issue that we identify as a team is delayed presentation of children during asthma attacks um, when they have been uh, given treatment at school and perhaps sent home from school because of concern that they are unwell with their asthma but then parents or caregivers not really understanding that that initial treatment might be why their child is now looking much better mm -hmm. uh, and therefore not bringing them to an emergency department or an urgent GP practice in a timely fashion and um, we have had multiple cases where those delays have resulted in severe and even life-threatening attacks where there have been admissions to hospital um, including high dependency and intensive care. That's really important, actually, a really important point and uh, something that definitely we all need to look at. Um, what about you, Ashira? What do you think are the main um, issues or problems that you see as, as, as a nurse? So I think the main thing for us is that there's a public perception that having asthma symptoms is OK because you've got asthma. It's OK to use your reliever because you're wheezy, because you can't participate fully in sports and PE. And it's about just getting that message out that actually good asthma control is, is no symptoms. And actually we need to be challenging families and the, the children and young people themselves as, as, well the, as well as other professionals to say, look, actually a well-controlled asthmatic should not have symptoms and actually we need to do something about it. Yes, and that fits in quite nicely with the... Um... Uh, the the topic for this particular Ask About Asthma uh, um, 2024, actually. So in, in your views, um, Meredith, uh, what uh, additional recommendations would you have or what recommendations would you have for schools or asthma-friendly schools? Well, I think, first of all, actually collaborating, participating in the asthma-friendly uh, schools project and becoming accredited is absolutely vital because it um, it needs to be that 
all of the adults and uh, within a school setting understand about um, how to support children who have asthma because it's such a pro common problem you know multiple children in every class are likely to have a diagnosis of asthma and have an inhaler so you know there's lots of things that schools can um, do which the asthma friendly schools project will give them the skills and the confidence to do that well and that might be things like prompting parents to seek a review with their medical medical provider, whether that's GP or hospital, if they notice that a child has regular symptoms, if they notice that a child is regularly needing the reliever inhaler, if a child has got limitations on their physical activity or reducing attendance, um, and also vitally um, given the point that I made at the beginning, making sure that parents know when a reliever inhaler has been used in school. Um, whether that has crossed the threshold into being considered an attack that requires immediate medical attention without delay, or whether it's that the child had a couple of puffs of their reliever inhaler, but actually if they need some more at home, then they may be crossing that threshold later on. And for the parent to be able to put those two episodes together into a single um, thing in their mind so that they're asking for help at the appropriate time. So really, education mm -hmm. is, is quite key. Anything that you'd like to add, Ash? I think the Asthma Friendly Schools programme is fantastic and, you know, to be rolled out as a national programme to standardise the, the care of an asthmatic. Um, and it's all about getting those basics right. Just like you said, Sakeshi, it's about getting the education to those that need it and those that are supporting those with asthma. And I think it's a, a very clear document that actually gives some power to the school to advise when things are not quite right and advise families, you know, busy lives, busy families, sometimes their asthma can be on the, the low priority. And actually, if we're having a school who knows how to manage asthmatics, is able to identify particular trigger points or concerns and able to express that to families in a standardised way, I think it's just fantastic. And understands the risk. Mm, absolutely. Actually, that, you know, although this might seem like... Um, minor or occasional issue mm -hmm. the risks can be catastrophic and that's yeah. why it's so important to get it right it's looking at the big picture isn't it as opposed to just that one event in that one school on that one day it's about looking at it as a whole yes and and it's quite important to know this and recognize this just to prevent hospital admissions and even mm -hmm. you know um a, a dying from asthma so just a million dollar question. What would you wish schools knew from your point of view, Meredith? Um, I think just that there's lots of help and support available and that they can ask for it. But above all, that you shouldn't be able to look at a child and know that they're the one in the class with asthma. They should be able to participate in all the activities that their peers can. They should not be asking for help. They should not be sitting out and they should be living a full and healthy life with great attendance and good learning. And, and what about from your point of view, Ash? I think for schools, I'd like them to use the words triggers. I'd like them to use the words reliever and preventer and have that basic understanding. And, and actually for them to be on the asthma register as part of the asthma friendly schools, they'll be aware of those triggers. They'll be aware of the symptoms of which we should be looking and then being able to follow their plans. So I think some just overall general awareness, I think, should be taught in schools. And I think Ask About Asthma gives that platform, uh, which is a really good opportunity for schools and, and the community to understand a condition much better. And any practical points you'd like to add in uh, for schools? Is there any sort of areas that they need to consider uh, when doing things? Is, is there anything in particular you'd like um, um, to see schools adopting or doing? Absolutely. I think through some of the, the children, and young people that I've been working with, I think some schools are doing a fantastic job at that communication with families and communication with the people collecting them. So, for instance, there's a couple of schools in our local area who use um, the paper kind of wristbands that you'd get in festivals. And what they do is they write on two puffs of reliever given at 12 o'clock 
with sport. And then actually we're not having to worry about putting um, notes on an app or, or notes in a book bag or actually relying on that uh, staff member to then pass that message over that the child and the family have a very clear way of knowing that they were given their reliever and they're able to then track if they're needing it again later in the day that actually this was not a single episode. And I think that's a really, really good thing. I think a lot of schools could could adopt very easily at a low expense and low cost, really. That sounds like a really good idea, actually, because it's not pieces of paper or, you know, Absolutely. Um, reminding I think children. Are more electronic nowadays and, and nurseries and things like that. But I think something as basic as that, it doesn't have to be done by the same person. It could be done. And I know that one school used different colours. One new school may use, say, an orange if they needed it for PE. Or actually, if that child has come up with a trigger, been quite unwell because they've been sat on the floor and potentially dust mite allergic and have a coughing fit, they may have a blue one. And I think it's up to the school to adopt something that works for them. But I think that's a really good idea. Um, and for... For a final point, if I may make, I think the thing that that really protects against, and we've had some really difficult um, cases have come through our hospital where not only has there been that delay in presentation where the school have rightly identified that a child is having asthma, but then they haven't been brought for urgent medical care. And on a couple of occasions, that's been because the child has been collected by a grandparent or someone who's not their usual caregiver uh, who may not have been trained in the management of that, that child's asthma and hasn't really understood the implications. So by having that visual prompt there, but also by the school having the confidence to reinforce your child is being sent home early, you know, we're much more likely to have somebody else um, collect the child if they need to go home early because perhaps parents are at work and can't get there themselves you know this child is being sent home early because they are having an asthma attack and must be taken straight to a doctor or an urgent GP appointment um, and you know if you if anything happens between now and that appointment you must call 999 if they're needing more of the blue inhaler if they are complaining of tightness in their chest despite having had the treatment that we've given them if they're becoming wheezy if the child is drowsy or even if the person collecting the child doesn't know what to do next mm -hmm. they should just call 999 and get help get trained help straight away Yes, a very, very important point. Any tips for children going to uh, school trips? Yes, absolutely. I think that asthma plan is so valuable that actually everybody needs a copy of it. They need to be aware of it. They know of it. It is, you know, it's going to help with a family member, if the child themselves, if a staff member is panicking. It's a step by step, a, a green, orange, red. It tells them how to escalate it. And I think going on to what Meredith was saying about with the grandparents or with other family members or friends who may be collecting that child because they've gone home, the school need to think, is that child safe to go home with them? Is that child going home with a reliever? Do they need to photocopy the asthma plan and give it to the person that's collecting it? Do they need to take their reliever and their spacer home with them? Because actually they're going to be in the care of somebody else and actually their other medication are with the parent or at their home address. And I think they're little practical things that actually school need to think about. I'm sending this child home because I'm concerned. Do they have what they need to, to leave school safely? Uh, with school trips, I do think, you know, every school trip will have their risk assessments and asthma needs to be part of that. And the Asthma Friendly School programmes helps, I think, especially if it's looking at things like farms and zoos and things like that. We're looking at animal dander and triggers um, or very kind of high pollen days. Do they have their rhinitis treatment? Do they have their antihistamines? Are the families um, helping that child or young person to take their preventative medicines? So they can enjoy that school trip or that residential trip and actually, like, like Meredith has said, just be like every other child and not actually knowing that child has asthma because they've done that assessment. They've been able to tick all those boxes to make sure that child is safe. That's great. Some really, really useful tips for schools and, and for all of us, actually, as parents and carers um, and even um, child care. Uh, child carers like child minders and that. Any final points? 
I think for me, I think there is a lot of education out there. I think with the um, capabilities framework, I think with that tier training, I think with the asthma friendly schools, there is a lot of free education for asthma that schools could utilize and family and the community should as well. You know, and for me, I would just say communicate. You know, if a school is worried, there's support, as I said, you know, from school nurses, mm -hmm. but also reach out directly to that child's provider. Um, their contact details should be on mm -hmm. the back of the child's asthma plan. And I would be thrilled to have a school contact me and say, we've mm -hmm. noticed that something is not quite right. Can you help us sort it out? Um, I would be, you know, really, really glad to make that connection. I think the school nurses is, is so valuable. They're able to identify, they have the knowledge, they have the understanding, but then they also have the link with the health professionals as well if it needs escalating. Thanks so much, Br Keshi. Brilliant advice. Thank you so much. Thank so you. that concludes today's recording. Um, many thanks for joining us. Um, Ask About Asthma takes place from the 9th to the 15th of September and videos. Uh, podcasts, blogs will be released every day of the campaign. So search for hashtag Ask About Asthma 2024 to access any other content and to join us for the live events. Thank you.